Hi everyone, it's Sue Plum here to share a scrapbook process video with you. Now today's layout that I am sharing is a Christmas themed layout and this was created and inspired by the Coco Vanilla Studio monthly challenge which is a mood board called Bells and Baubles. There it is. It was designed by Tara McLean. And today I'm actually working with the new Joyful Collection, which is a Christmas themed collection. Now, I am not traditionally a fan of scrapping Christmas. If you know me well, you already know that. Um, but I do love Zoe's Christmas collections because it's not all about the traditional red green color palette. She always has some beautiful um, pinks and blues and and things just to soften that what I find a really harsh color palette of Christmas. So I decided to go full mixed media for this one today. Uh, I haven't had a chance to do a mixed media layout since I moved into my new house, which I'll talk about after. So I decided to get stuck in with a mixed media layout. So I was working with some white cardstock. I've got some 300 GSM white cardstock that I'm working with. I've also got some Distress Oxides. Now the colours I am using um, on the background, that first one I'm using is Speckled Egg. And then I'm also going to use some Rustic Wilderness, which is a beautiful green. And then I'm also going to use some Worn Lipstick just to make some splatters. So I'm going back with one of my tried and true techniques there, which is where I just swipe or drip the oxides onto my messy mat, add a bit of water, swirl them around with my finger and just lay the cardstock down over the top to pick up the color. Now, if you are a perfectionist, this is probably not the technique for you. Um, I quite enjoy the challenge of using this technique because it's a case of whatever will be will be. Uh, you put the oxide down on the pad, on the mat, you lay the cardstock down over the top and whatever you end up with on the page is what you work with. So you can see that I've sort of got that sort of splotchy pattern going on there with the first color and now my aim with the second color I didn't put as much on the mat this time because my aim with the second color was just to layer a bit over the top so you would have seen that I dried off between because I didn't want them to blend I actually wanted them to layer so I made sure that the first one was dry before I put the second one down and you can see I've just used a smaller amount of that green uh, rustic wilderness there so I was working with that sort of blue color, the green, um, had that down on the background. Oh, this is where I was going to um, pick up some of the color. So what I'm actually doing here is I am splattering with some plain water. If you haven't worked with Distress Oxides before, uh, if you, you can reactivate them like this with, with water or another wet medium and you can actually pull some of the colour out. So that's all I was doing there. I just wanted to give it a more sort of distressed look on the background. So I'm just splattering with that plain water out of my cup and a brush and just picking the colour up and soaking it up with some paper towel. Okay, that's the first two colours down on the background. Now, I'm working with this little stencil here, which is, act which is actually a Stencil Girl one, and I'm working with the uh, Crafters Workshop Light and Fluffy Modeling Paste because I actually wanted to put some stars down on the background because stars are very Christmassy and I love stars anyway. Now, the problem, <laughs> the problem with my stencils is um, everything in my scrap room at the moment is a bit of disarray since I've moved in. And I have multiple star stencils, but do you think I could find any of them? None. Zip, zilch, nada, none of them. I don't know where they are. So while I get some, chance, uh, some time over the Christmas holidays, I will actually get this room sorted out properly. Um, I may give you a little bit of a tour after I do have this room sorted out properly. But for now, I was working with this little stencil that had one little area of stars on it and I just had to move that around to get the stars where I wanted them. So that's the backstory to why I was using that star stencil and none of the other ones that I actually intended to use. 
So you can see I am actually cleaning off that stencil, which it is quite unusual for me, just with a baby wipe before I put it away, because that one was actually still quite clean and in good condition. And then I'm just driving, drying off that modeling paste with my heat gun before I moved on to the next step in my layers. So yes, you would have noticed that I have had quite a break away from creating uh, process videos and scrapbooking. Uh, as I mentioned, we moved house and my scrap stuff was packed up for quite some time. And once it was all packed, there was no unpacking it. And it just had to stay there until we finally got a house, moved in and got it all unpacked. So I'm still finding my feet in this new scrap room that I have, which, yes, I now actually have a whole room to myself, which is quite exciting. Um, and it's, it's interrupted my flow somewhat because things aren't where they used to be. I'm not quite fully organized. Um, my lighting wasn't the greatest because I don't have all of my rig set up that I had set up last time. So you'll just have to bear with me as we go along. So getting back to my page, uh, you can see that I added some stamping over the top of those oxides and that stenciling. Uh, the stamp that I was using had some uh, little stars on it. It's from Viva Las Vegas Stamps. It's just a rubber stamp and I use them unmounted just so I can bend them and move them around the page easily to where I want the image to go. Then I went back in with the worn lipstick Distress Oxide. I've just mixed it up with a little bit of water on my messy mat there and I'm just using a kid's nylon brush there just to create some splatters on my page. And then I decided it wasn't quite messy enough and I wanted to add a bit of a festive touch. So I pulled out my Heidi Swap Colour Shine there in gold and added some big fat drops of it on the page just to give it that bit of shimmer and shine. So I let that dry off. I dried it off a bit with a heat gun, but I also let it sit for a little bit and just didn't touch it and dry a bit naturally as well. Um, and then I moved on to the next part of my page. Now, you you will probably notice when you watch my process, it's not as free-flowing as it usually is. As I said, as I'm going along, I'm trying to locate items. I'm not one that plans everything that I'm going to use when I start creating a layout, so I don't necessarily have everything right at my hand. Um, sometimes I have to reach for things. Sometimes I have to dig for things, and at the moment, I actually have to have a treasure hunt when I want specific things. So as I said, I'll find my feet in this room soon enough and I'll get my flow back. So with that uh, mixed media background that I created on the cardstock, I actually trimmed it down to measure 11 by 11 because I wanted to mount it on some patterned paper. So you can see that I've got one of the 12 by 12 sheets from the Joyful collection there and I just roughly cut out the middle of it so I can save that for another project and to use again. And you can see that I actually did use the middle again straight away because I created a mat to go underneath my photo. So the photo that I'm actually working with here is one of my sons and it's a photo of him with one of the Christmas cookies that we made last year. Now this is a tradition that I do with my kids every year. We make cookies every year. Generally we make uh, a batch of sugar cookies which we then ice and decorate and we also do a batch of gingerbread reindeers. So I was inspired by the image from the mood board that has the cookies in it and I thought this is a, a memory and a tradition that definitely needs documenting. So I actually created this page to document that. Now, this was not the only page that I created. I've actually created a matching Project Life, which I will share um, on the in the Coco Vanilla Studio community group, Facebook community group, and you'll get a look at it there. But it's not actually in this process video because this video was long enough as it was. So, as I said, bear with me. So I did fluff around with these papery layers for way too long. Usually I'm a lot faster when it comes to stacking up my papers underneath my photo. 
but I was working with some scraps and like I said, the ki- and the kids were coming in and out, in and out, annoying me, even though I have a door on my room, you know, that, that doesn't seem to stop them. Uh, they just fling the door open, mum, I'm hungry, mum, he said this, mum, he did that. And yeah, it's not really conducive to the creative process. So there I am. I finally decided on all the little bits of paper that I was going to use. I tore them into shape. I decided how I was going to stack them up. And you will see in a minute that I pull in my long arm stapler just to staple the stack together because I find that a lot easier just to attach the pieces together like that. And then I can move the stack as one entire piece when it comes to putting it down on the page. So in behind my photo, I had actually put a bit of uh, scrap cardboard that I cut from an old pizza box because that just helped pop my photo up from the page. Underneath, I have also got half a paper doily. I don't know why I'd used it for on a previous project. I found half laying around and I thought, yep, I can use that. So that half a doily went into my layers as well. Now, those paper doilies that you can see me using there, those beautiful um, lace doilies, you can actually get those in the Coco Vanilla Studio um, shop as well. There'll be a link in the comments below to the store because you can pick up this collection, the Joyful Collection, and you can also pick up those doilies in store as well. Now, I'm adding a little bit of texture to my layout here. You know, I like to use frayed gauze on my layout, so I just shred it up or frayed up a little sheet of gauze there, um, put it down behind my photo, attached it with staples, and then I'm going to use a liquid adhesive. I prefer Helmer 450. It's a quick dry. It's a really good one, nice and strong, and it will go down over the fibres of that gauze really, really well. So that was all the main components of my page down so far. I had my mixed media background, I had my papery layers, I had my photo in place and now it was just a matter of going through and fiddling with some embellishments. Now there are lots of embellishments in this collection. Um, there are die cut ephemera, there's stickers, there's chipboard stickers, um, there are puffy title stickers, there are little puffy stickers, there are wood buttons, like there is just so much to choose from. So I didn't actually use all of the things on this layer as much as I really do like to usually get all of the things on a page. Um, I was mainly working with the die cut ephemera. Um, I had a few, ended up using a few bits of chipboard I ended up using some of the gold stars from the Puffy Gold Titles pack. And yeah, that was yeah, that was about it actually. Uh, because the other thing that I did end up using was some fussy cut stars that I cut from the 12 by 12 pattern papers as well. So you'll see that I am fluffing around. I am doing what uh, my fellow DT Gwen likes to term auditioning. Uh, generally, I'm not a great auditioner. I will just find something. If it seems to work where I place it, I will just stick it down straight away. But as I said, uh, I'm still finding my feet and getting my flow, getting back into it. Do you find that if you have a breakaway that when you return to creating that your flow, your workflow is not as easy or do you find it like riding a bike and you just get straight back on and you're back in the zone straight away? I'm very curious as to whether a break, you know, disturbs everyone else's flow. So you can see those beautiful um, chipboard stickers that I'm working with there. They're actually gold foiled as well. They've got some gold foiling on them. Um, and you know that gold is perfect to add a festive touch to any page. I mean, as you can see there, doing a mixed media layout, it isn't necessarily a traditional festive style of layout. But if you add in a few elements like some gold and some little Christmas theme things, you can make a mixed media layout work for anything. So you can see the actual, the shine on that word joy there as it's catching my work light from above um, and showing off that beautiful gold foiling. Now that's the pattern paper there where I went and cut some fussy cut stars. I just wanted to scatter them just around the photo and just add a little bit of extra festive touch to it. 
Um, when it came to finishing off this layout, I actually dug into my stash of roller stamps because they were nearby, grabbed an ink, I stamped some phrases on my page. And just to pull in, I, I realized at the end I needed to pull in a little bit more darkness because my son had his dark framed glasses on there and I hadn't really used a great deal of black on the page other than the stamping and I wanted to pull in a little bit more so I actually added some black splatters at the end as well just using some ink. Now if you have any questions about this process um, make sure you leave them below. I realize I've sped it up quite a bit today because I didn't want to make this video too long because I realize that people only have limited amount of time and if you like me a limited attention span. So that was about it. Now if you are interested once I've got my scrap room organized if you are interested in seeing a tour and if you have any questions about anything um, please let me know in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, as I mentioned I will also put the link to the Coco Vanilla Studio store down below so you can shop that joyful collection pick up some doilies if you'd like to play along with this challenge, uh, you will need to join us in the Coco Vanilla Studio Facebook community group. You can load your entry there and every month we have one random winner who wins a $25 voucher to spend in store. So it's worth having a go at that. And I'm pretty sure that was the last thing that I did. Oh no, I also stamped the date. So that was about it. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.